In an era marked by profound adversity, women faced grave accusations and injustice. The narrative unfolds in the year 1235, in a quaint village city, where a harrowing scene emerges. Three women stand accused of consorting with black magic, a charge that carries the gravest of consequences. The church, wielding immense power, condemns them to death. As they face their grim fate, the church father offers a glimmer of hope. He declares that any woman who confesses her sins will be granted forgiveness. Steered by this, one woman admits to dabbling in dark arts and devil worship. Another, steadfast in her innocence, denies any wrongdoing, claiming her only crime was crafting remedies to counteract black magic. The third woman, marked by her dreadful visage, neither confesses nor repents, but instead curses the father. Despite their pleas, the era's unforgiving justice prevails, and all three are executed, their bodies suspended from a bridge. The soldiers ready to leave the dreadful scene are halted by the father. He insists on performing rites from the Book of Solomon over their bodies to cleanse the taint of black magic. Skeptical but obedient, the soldiers depart, leaving the father alone with his task. Under the cloak of night, the father returns, reciting solemn incantations over each woman. As the words of Solomon echo, the devil is purged from two of the women. However, the third woman, the one who had cursed the father, is resurrected as a fearsome witch. In a twist of fate, she exacts her vengeance, hanging the father from the very bridge where she was executed. The story then leaps forward to the 13th century, a time rife with war. Amidst the chaos, two brave soldiers, Felsen and Berman, emerge as heroes. Their bravery and loyalty to the church are unparalleled, and they're engaged in numerous battles, including a significant one in 1544. Their friendship and courage stand as a testament to the spirit of their time, a stark contrast to the dark injustice meted out in the village years before. In the thick of battle, Felsen and Berman, two valiant soldiers, fought fiercely against what they believed to be enemy forces. However, a harrowing truth was soon unveiled. Amidst the chaos of war, Bayman's sword struck not a soldier, but a woman, revealing a grim scene of women and children as their unintended victims. This revelation shattered them, they were surrounded by the fallen bodies of innocence, a sight that deeply disturbed their conscience. Confronting their leader, they expressed their horror and remorse. They had not joined the war to spill the blood of the defenseless. In a decisive act of defiance, Felsen and Bauman rejected the call to oppress the innocent. They abandoned their army, turning their backs on the war, becoming rebels in the eyes of their church and nation. Their rebellion, however, forced them into hiding. Christianity's rise brought with it stringent laws where rebellion, betrayal, and non-compliance were met with the severest of punishments, death. As they journeyed through Styria, a sense of foreboding enveloped them. They stumbled upon a desolate house in the forest, seeking refuge only to find its occupants dead, succumbing to a grave illness. The environment in Styria was unsettling. Bodies were not buried, instead, they were gathered in one place. The air was filled with a mix of prayers for mercy and acts of self-flagellation. Amidst this chaos, Felsen and Baron were outsiders, unaware of the calamity that had befallen the region. A soldier, amidst his own grief, revealed the cause of this despair, a rampant disease that caused the body to rot, which had been plaguing the area for three years. It had claimed his entire family. Felsen and Bowman, who had come in search of aid, now found themselves amidst a new kind of horror, far removed from the battlefields yet equally tragic. Their journey had taken a turn into a realm of suffering and death, a stark contrast to the war they had forsaken. As Felsen and Bauman prepared to leave the desolate region of Styria, they caught the attention of a local soldier who recognized them. Their attempt to depart discreetly was thwarted as they were apprehended and presented before the king, who himself was suffering from the mysterious disease. The king, aware of Felsen and Bauman's past bravery and recent rebellion, informed them of a dire situation. He believed the disease was a curse from hell, brought into the world by a woman, a witch, whom they had now imprisoned. The king revealed that the cure was tied to Solomon's book, located in Zivrik. He proposed a deal, 
If Felsen and Bauman could transport the witch to Zevrik, where the church leaders would decide her fate, their past sins would be forgiven by the church. Bauman, still haunted by the memories of their last battle, initially refused. This defiance infuriated the king, leading to their imprisonment alongside the alleged witch. In the cold confines of the prison, Bayman's heart softened towards the young woman, who despite being labeled a witch, displayed a vulnerable and human side, shivering and weeping from her injuries. Convinced of her humanity and perhaps seeking redemption for past actions, Bauman agreed to the king's task. Their journey to Zevrik would take six or seven days, accompanied by their father and a soldier. Unfamiliar with the route and reluctant to rely solely on a map, they sought the guidance of a merchant who had traveled to Zevrik nine years prior. The group, now five in number, transported the witch in a cage. To everyone except the father, she appears an ordinary girl, not a witch. Along the way, they were followed by a local boy, eager to join them and become a soldier. Initially reluctant, they were swayed after witnessing the boy's swordsmanship. As night fell, they took turns guarding the witch. During a cat's watch, he shared with the father the sorrowful tale of his deceased daughter. The witch, overhearing this story, seemed to show a reaction, suggesting a depth and complexity to her character that went beyond the label of a witch. The journey to Zevrik, fraught with uncertainty and moral dilemmas, continued under the cloak of darkness. The harrowing journey of Felsen, Bayman, and their companions deepened in complexity and danger. Eckhart, one of the group members, was tragically ensnared by the witch's illusions, seeing his deceased daughter calling out for help. These visions, so real to him, lured him into a deadly trap. Amidst his delusion, he encountered the young boy with the sword, but his distorted perception led to a fatal misunderstanding, and he was impaled by the sword. This shocking incident left the group in dismay, questioning the strange powers of the witch who could conjure such convincing deceptions. They managed to recapture the witch after her brief escape, but her presence continued to cast a shadow over their journey. The father, wise to the witch's tricks, cautioned everyone not to reveal their innermost fears and desires, as the witch could exploit these to create divisive and dangerous illusions. His warning highlighted the psychological warfare they were unknowingly engaged in. Their path led them to a precarious rope bridge spanning a deep gorge, a physical manifestation of the treacherous journey they were on. Transporting the heavily caged witch across this bridge was a daunting task, further complicated when the bridge collapsed, cutting off their return path. As they ventured into a dense and notorious forest, a place feared for its ability to trap and disorient those who entered, the psychological strain intensified. The foggy, confusing landscape of the forest mirrored the mental fog the group was experiencing. The merchant, tormented by nightmares induced by the witch's powers, reached a breaking point. Unable to endure the witch's torment any longer, the merchant, driven by desperation and fear, decided to take drastic action. He armed himself with his bow, intent on ending the source of their nightmares, the witch. This decision marked a pivotal moment in their journey, as they grappled not only with the physical challenges of their quest, but also with the ethical and moral dilemmas posed by the witch's presence and powers. In the dense and disorienting forest, the group's desperation reached new heights. Bayman, overwhelmed by frustration and the seemingly endless maze of trees, contemplated killing the witch, believing her to be the root of their woes. However, the father intervened, urging restraint and wisdom in the face of their daunting situation. Amidst this tension, Felsen brought a glimmer of hope, announcing that they had reached their destination, Zervrik, situated atop a mountain, their attempts to gain entry were initially met with silence, until Kay skillfully crossed the wall and opened the gates from the inside. The scene that greeted them in the church of Zevrik was one of devastation. The father was overcome with grief upon discovering that everyone there had succumbed to the same disease that plagued their journey. It was revealed that these fallen souls had been attempting to replicate Solomon's book, hoping its sacred or magical words could counteract the disease's effects. In this moment of despair, Bayman declared their mission their last hope. As the priest began reciting from the original Solomon's book, an unexpected turn occurred. 
The witch, whose voice transformed, revealed deep secrets about Bayman, suggesting the presence of a demonic soul within her. The father, quick to discern the truth, realized that the girl was not a witch, but rather possessed by a demonic entity responsible for spreading the disease. His incantations began to affect the devil, revealing its true horrific form. In a climactic confrontation, as the devil attempted to escape, Ke continued reciting the magical words. A spark ignited within the devil, engulfing it in flames and banishing it back to hell, also freeing the girl from its possession. Bayman's selfless actions and prayers played a crucial role in this victory, leading to his redemption and the forgiveness of his sins. The group, now relieved of the demonic presence, buried the three deceased and took the girl with them, leaving Zevrik. As they departed, a sense of peace returned. The dangerous disease that had terrorized the land vanished, marking the end of a harrowing journey filled with supernatural challenges, moral dilemmas, and the triumph of faith and courage over evil.